what's going on everyone I'm gonna make a video that will give some really good advices for people who want to get into custom mapping and doom snap map and with that said I do expect people to already know the basics of snap map like you should know how to play around with the logics you should know about the 12 enemy limit and basically everything from the tutorial that snap map included I really don't recommend people to get into snap I mean custom mapping if they're not familiar with how snap map works because it's kind of like an advanced technique I guess when it comes to using snap map. So my first advice for custom mapping is to make a preset. There is no preset for the grid module where it's decorated with the textures. So what I like to do to save time from texturing the entire grid module, I make a preset and it saves so much time when you have that because you don't have to constantly make the geometry and then texture the entire module which takes much longer and it, and it's not fun too. Matter of fact, it was the second least favorite thing for me back in Snap Map when we didn't have the textures on the blocking boxes, but barricading was my least favorite thing and I'm glad those days are over. With that said, you need to be careful with texturing the grid module. If it's too out of the module, the texture will flicker constantly and also try not to put textures over textures because that will also do that too. Sometimes. I can't seem to completely remove that even if I'm lining it as good as I can, but I don't really mind it if it's very little, but if every floor texture is flickering, then that's something that does bother me, and it's something I believe mappers shouldn't do that. The difference between the normal grid module and classic variant is something you should know. First of all, the normal one is great for creating intense lighting, and it also includes shadows. However, you do have to rely a lot on the lighting effects to make the map not completely overpowered by its shadows. What that means is you are going to use more network and it's going to eat a lot of it if you create an indoor area with that module. You also do have the ability to use decals which is great and it does allow a lot of room for experimenting. The classic variant is not just designed for the classic textures, it can work with the modern ones too. The beautiful thing about the classic variant is you don't have to rely a lot on lighting so this gives you a lot of space for network. It's actually easier to texture the entire room for whatever reason compared to the normal module. It's also shorter too but it's still high enough to make tall pillars or obelisks. However, you cannot use decals and using modern textures. It's very hard to see them clearly and also what you see in the map editor is not the real portrait when you play it. So when I put a filter effect on, I always have to playtest it to see how it looks. Since the modern textures are hard to see, you do have to rely on temporarily using lighting effects to see things clearly or temporarily using a different filter effect too. The classic variant also has more options. The normal module only has one type where it has two door slots up and down, while the classic variant there's at least four slots and they're directed up, down, left, and right. And then you got more options too, which does have more doors and the elevator one. That's another thing you should know, and I don't want to say one particular variant is better. It's all about what you're trying to map. If you want to make a cyberpunk themed map, the normal grid module is a must because of the decals. But if you want to remake a classic Doom map, let's just say Map 27 Monster Condor from Doom 2, where on Ultraviolence there's a lot of enemies, there's a lot of indoor spaces, and it's a pretty big map for Doom 2 standards, then Classic Module is the way to go, and I would use the 4 slots variant. I do want to say there's a weird bug in the Classic Grid Module, the 4 door variant one. I'm not sure about the other variants, but if you spawn outside of that module, it will despawn the Sentinel and Horde Imps for whatever reason. So be aware of that, because that bug kind of bothered me when I was trying to figure out why the imps were despawning in my map 21 remake. Here's the last important thing you should really know before I end this talk about grid modules. You need to be very careful with the amount of objects and blocking boxes. Don't put too many on it because it will cause frame rate lag. I'm not really sure how many particularly, but it is something you have to keep in mind. Uh, it was something I was extremely stressed about when I was making my second map to my campaign because I wanted constant action with 10 to 12 units and I wanted to make sure the frame rate wouldn't take a dip. But I'm glad I managed to, you know, succeed that and have no problems while playtesting it. The frame rate lag is definitely a problem on consoles or people that might not have high end gaming PCs, and it's just not fun playing Doom around 20 to 30 frames 
compared to a solid 60 that I generally have on the Xbox One. So it does kind of suck that there is like an object limit in a way and you do gotta be careful with it because it will affect the performance but from my experience I'm still managed to like you know make some pretty decent looking areas while using a lot of objects in grid modules so I don't want to say like it's a complete you know buzz kill but at the same time you do need to be aware of it. So we're done with the grid module talk now I want to talk about creating an identity as a mapper. Are you more of an artistic mapper like Big Dog and Void Runner? Are you into making maps that have a lot of height variance and slopes like Watsta? There's a lot you can do when it comes to custom mapping and it's best to create an identity to keep things fresh. I always try to be well rounded when I make maps. I make remakes, originals, survival based and a lot of my maps are co-op compatible. I always like to have maps that are explorative and offer players multiple paths to play like in the Infernal Machine when players teleport to my first module you have three different paths to choose. It's always good to have a signature when you make custom maps because I believe it's to let players know more about your mapping style and if we have more mappers that try to be different from each other it builds variety and variety is always a good thing to have. Now I want to talk about bypassing snap map limitations. Snap map is strong for an in-game editor but it's an in-game editor and there's always going to be limits compared to using a real SDK but it's still possible to bypass its limitations. For example, you cannot use enemies on top of blocking boxes or objects, but it's possible to make them spawn to a teleport destination if you want to use enemies on higher heights. The AI does behave pretty weirdly, but it's still, um, they still kind of work, and it, it's generally best to use the ranged units because they work the best compared to the melee-based demons. One of the things I'm proud of discovering was my swimming mechanic. I remember just messing around with snap map and thought it would be cool if Doom did allow you to swim in some sort of pool of blood and guts and eventually I kind of realized there was a way to somewhat replicate that by using snap map and eventually I did it. So while snap map does have certain limitations like that you can always try to figure out how to bypass it if you know the mechanics well. I'm gonna end the video right here, and I'm back on the YouTube grind. I've been gone from it because I've been heavily focused on my snap map campaign, and now it's done. I'm gonna take some time off from mapping and just relax for a bit. I'm definitely gonna start using more of my time on making YouTube content because a lot of these maps I made for my campaign was me just pushing snap map to its limits and also trying to push myself as a mapper too. I might make a trailer for my campaign for more promotion because it's by far the most accomplishing thing I've done in Snap Map and I'm just so proud to be done with it. I also want to give a shout out to guys like Rock, Rock Hard Gamer 45 for you know helping me promote the map because he would like play it and you know it's just really awesome to be able to see other people play your map and then you get some sort of feedback from it. With that said, stay tuned for more videos, people.